This video is about uh, five of my favorite features of Eclipse. And I'm making this because I found out that uh, most of the, the senior developers of the Bitcoin core are even in some cases using Vim, a printer, a pad of paper and pen. And uh, I wonder how much more productive these guys could be if they had a tool like, like Eclipse in their hands. Uh, and I also have written an article on how to set up Eclipse so that you can do Bitcoin development. Uh, Bitcoin is in, in C++ mostly, um, but Eclipse is originally a tool uh, to work with Java, but it's been adapted to work with multiple languages. So without further ado, I'm going to show you some of the things that you can do. So navigating a huge project or a project you don't know, it's extremely easy with Eclipse. Um, in the Mac, um, I'm going to be using the command uh, key. If you're in Windows, you're going to be using the control key. So command shift T will show you the open type dialog. And here, as, it's, uh, as soon as you start typing, you will find things. So I don't know, if I, I wanted to see for search result class in Frostwire or an interface. I have this here. And then I have an interface, which is a contract of, of, uh, to develop concrete classes later on. So if I wanted to see what implements this, I just type command T on top of this. And it's going to show me all the, 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 the implementations of that. And that makes it really, really useful when you are in a new project or you have complex object hierarchies. Um, so uh, I'm actually, I actually need to do a, a refactoring, a cleanup. And I need to get rid of this class called uh, the HTTP fetcher. So I'm going to look for it. It's already here. It remembers what I looked for a lot. If I type HTTP fetcher, it will find it. And then uh, you can find all the references in the project by uh, uh, selecting this and pressing Command Shift G. And I cannot live without this. This is really cool. So here on the search, you will be seeing all the the, the references to this class. And you can do the same thing for variables or objects. Um, so let's go here. And uh, I'm going to show you. So I, I want to replace this fetcher with this HTTP client. So the way I create that uh, is like this. I, I uh, have a, a method here that returns a new instance. So you can type a line of code and then if this returns an object you can press command 1 and you can assign it to a local variable or to a class variable which is called a field. And you don't have to know what type it is. It doesn't matter how complex the type it is. You can always get a reverse uh, uh, assignment uh, with command 1. And command 1 will also help you fix many things. Let's say now I have this new instance and I want to add a foo object which is not there. It's going to look like it has an error. But if I press command 1, it, can, it suggests here that I can uh, create a method for it. If I do that, then it goes to the, the file and it creates a method for me. So that's pretty cool. Um, all these, these shortcuts. Um, okay, so if I wanted to rename this, I press Command Option R, and now I can rename it. So uh, let's say get bytes two, and now everywhere in the code it will be renamed to get bytes two. Um, if I look at the changes now, I'll say here on, on Git, it will show me that all these files where I was using get bytes were changed. Uh, so let's let's get that back the way it was. Command Option R for rename, and then it will rename back. Um, it does all of that throughout the project, so it saves a tremendous amount of time. So I don't know why these guys are still using Vim and paper. Um, there's no need for that. Uh, sometimes I don't know. You have a piece of code like this, and you want to just um, make this method a little more readable. You can again Command One, and you can extract that to a method. And it will determine what parameters go there. So here it determined all those parameters here. It's pretty cool. I'm going to undo that. Um, so that's, that's also very useful. And then, you know, it's not just, it's not just Java. Um, you can use most of those things here in a C++ project. Uh, for those of you who are doing C++ development and want a faster tool to develop, uh, this has a very powerful step-by-step uh, -step interactive debugger. Um, so let me show you. Let's say this address book page at H. Uh, 
So there's a class here, this is C++ now, and I want to see where this is used. So I, again, the same thing, command shift G, and it will look, you know, throughout all my project and show me all the references. And uh, I believe I could also do refactoring here. Let's see, uh, command shift R. Yes, I can also rename the class. So that's super, super useful. Um, it's, it's like having a guy that knows the entire project and it will write a lot of code for you. So you will save a tremendous amount of time. So I hope that kind of convinces you to take a look at Eclipse. It's a very, very powerful editor.